In order to escape the oppressive New York City heat, in August 1952, a little-known 22-year-old actress named Joanne Woodward ducked into her agent's office. She found an equally unrecognized 27-year-old Paul Newman inside, who was perfectly attired in his seersucker suit, had a full head of curly hair, and those striking blue eyes that would soon become famous the world over. He looked like an ad for an ice cream soda, Woodward recalled to today, 50 years later, adding, and I thought, oh, that's disgusting. Newman was far more dazzled at first sight, and luckily, earned an opportunity to make a better impression when they both joined the production of a new stage show, Picnic, later that year. She was modern and independent. He remembered in Sean Levy's Paul Newman, a life. I was shy, a bit conservative. It took me a long time to persuade her that I wasn't as dull as I looked. In fact, any suspicion regarding Newman's flawless appearance and alleged dullness quickly gave way to a mutual appreciation and affection, opening the way for a relationship that would serve as the benchmark for all couples who endure life's unexpected ups and downs together. Newman, already married, was unable to suppress his feelings for his co-star. At the time, there was one major obstacle to the two acting on their shared attraction. Newman was already married and had a young son. He fathered a daughter shortly after Picnic opened on Broadway in February 1953, and another girl arrived the following year. Newman and Woodward tried to keep their relationship professional. He even set her up with a friend, playwright James Costigan, describing her as a wonderful girl. Yet the young, Attractive thespians couldn't keep apart for long, particularly as their burgeoning careers kept them in the same social and professional orbit. Fresh off the success of his first hit film Somebody Up There Likes Me, 1956, Newman revealed to his wife, Jackie, that he was in love with Woodward. He soon moved out of their Long Island home, though she refused to end the marriage. By the time Newman and Woodward were tapped to co-star in the long, hot summer, 1958. They no longer bothered concealing their romance from the cast, crew, or any other casual observer. Jackie finally agreed to a divorce, clearing the path for the co-stars to tie the knot in Las Vegas in January 1958. Woodward struggled juggling motherhood and her career. Even though Newman felt bad about the divorce, he and Woodward were finally able to let go of the responsibility of maintaining an unmorphal relationship. They quickly adapted to their new stage of life as Hollywood's power couple. During this time, Newman made the leap from heartthrob actor to big-time movie star with films including The Hustler, 1961, and Hud, 1963. Woodward, meanwhile, appeared content to slow her career and raise their growing family. Just one year after winning an Academy Award for her performance in The Three Faces of Eve, 1957, she gave birth to the first of their three daughters. But Woodward found it difficult to adjust to motherhood after winning an Oscar because, as she subsequently said, she had never felt particularly at ease among kids. Levy writes in her life that she once attacked her husband for being selfish after he rejected to co-star in one of her favorite projects knowing that his involvement would ensure the picture was made. She still had hopes to make her mark on theater and screen. Newman eventually reversed course and joined her for what became A New Kind of Love, 1963. Five years later, he made her the focus of his big screen directing debut, Rachel, Rachel. Woodward showed she could still pack a wallop as a dramatic actress, even as she aged out of the lead romantic roles. Newman and Woodward enjoyed working together while prizing separate interests. Hollywood has a double standard for age and beauty, so Newman breezed into his 40s as one of the most well-known movie stars in the world while Woodward's career stagnated. The couple decided to take out a full-page ad in the Los Angeles Times in 1969 to make their commitment to one another clear because of the apparent mismatch between the still virile starring guy and his critically acclaimed but lesser-known wife. According to her life, Newman was having an affair at this time with author Nancy Bacon. By taking a plane to England, the location of their honeymoon, 
the pair was able to acquire the much-needed one-on-one time they needed to get through what might have been an irreparable break in their marriage. Their relationship survived in part, because each discovered an outside interest that, if not fully understood by the other, at least received spousal endorsement. For Newman, it was a curiosity for auto racing that developed into a full throttle passion following his turn as a driver in 1969's winning. For Woodward, it was an appreciation for ballet, both as a means of exercise and a form of artistic expression, that prompted her to become a patron of several troops. Together, they campaigned for political candidates and remained devoted to their primary jobs, with Newman again stepping behind the camera to direct his wife in the effect of gamma rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds, 1972. And when it came time to put aside work for the day, the couple retreated to their beloved estate in a wooded section of Westport, Connecticut, which included a treehouse specifically earmarked for their privacy when guests were in town. Aging brought maturity, but not the dimming of mutual affection. Tragedy struck in 1978, when Newman's son from his first marriage, Scott, died from an accidental drug overdose. Everyone in the extended family was shocked by the news, which also seemed to cause the couple's priorities to change. Together, they earned money for the Scott Newman Foundation, which focused on educating people about substance misuse. Newman then built on his illustrious record of philanthropy by starting his hole in the wall gang camps for kids with life-altering illnesses. The shift also was reflected in their screen roles. Newman was now moving into the elder statesman phase of his career, finally nabbing an Oscar for The Color of Money, 1986, while Woodward picked up an Emmy for playing an Alzheimer's patient in the TV film Do You Remember Love, 1985. They also resumed their long-time collaboration with the Newman directed. Woodward headlined The Glass Menagerie, 1987, and went on to co-star in Mr. and Mrs. Bridge, 1990. Despite the serious nature of their performances, the two maintained a playful appreciation of one another in public. Newman, who once famously declared his monogamy by telling Playboy, I have steak at home. Why go out for hamburger? again risked his wife's wrath by comparing her to a bottle of fine wine in a New York Times interview. Later, when Woodward visited him on the set of the 1998 film Twilight, a mischievous Newman pulled a young Lee Schreiber aside to comment on her sexiness. Sound bites aside, there were times when Newman simply needed to be in his life companion's presence. While filming Blaze, 1989, in Louisiana, he abruptly called Woodward and asked her to join him. Although she was in the midst of the spring semester at New York's Sarah Lawrence College, with the hope of completing a long-delayed degree, she dropped everything to head south. There's no academic degree in the world that can compare in importance to the fact that the person you've loved for 31 years is missing you, she noted, per her life. The couple continued making joint projects into their golden years. During a 2002 Today interview, Woodward mentioned that someone once asked her what their relationship was based on. And I said he's very good looking and very sexy and all of those things, she recalled, and what finally is left is if you can make somebody laugh. And I keep her laughing, Newman interjected. Additionally, they maintained the flame through sharing a love for the profession that initially drew them together. They played a prominent role in the Westport Country Playhouse's revival of the play Our Town, which used its sold-out performances to secure a Broadway run in the winter of 2002 to 2003. In a later performance for Valentine's Day 2007, they joined forces on the Playhouse stage to deliver love poems. The following January, three days after Newman marked his 83rd birthday, the husband and wife celebrated their golden anniversary. It was a quiet affair for the aging couple, with Newman battling lung cancer and Woodward adjusting to the real-life onset of Alzheimer's, but a memorable one all the same. I feel privileged to love that woman, he told a small gathering of their children and friends. That I am married to her is the joy of my life. Newman finally exited, stage left, nine months later, 
unable to help his wife to the finish line of her own health battles. While not quite the happy ending they and fans hoped for, they nevertheless left behind the story of a marriage, with all its glories and imperfections, that was every bit as monumental as their respective careers.